Stanja Belisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations. I was just um, Googling around on my iPad, which is incidentally the device that I'm using to make this video. Sort of a low budget video, but I don't, I don't really need to make any drawings for it, so I'll just yammer at you with my face. In March 1979, in QST magazine, Jerry Hall, Kilo One, uh, Tango Delta, was, uh, was my, well actually he was my supervisor and I worked uh, in the technical department just uh, a few feet away from Jerry in March of 1979. Uh, and I was one of the uh, assistant technical editors. He wrote an article in QST that was published that month on how well regular um, electrical uh, cord, n uh, commonly known as zip cord or heavy-duty lamp cord, works as a parallel wire transmission line on the high-frequency ham radio bands. Uh, if you Google around on your computer, I'm sure it doesn't have to be an iPad, uh, you'll find that article, March 1979, QST. It's a two-page article. He found uh, the characteristic impedance of the stuff is about 105 ohms, give or take a little bit, and the velocity factor is around 69.5%. So that's... Um, uh, I don't know if you're going to need a 100 ohm uh, feed line for anything. You might uh, use a full wavelength loop antenna on HF, which has a um, feed point impedance of around 100 ohms, I believe, and it might make a pretty good match. The only problem with lamp cord or zip cord uh, that Jerry found uh, in that article, as I understand it, is the stuff is pretty lossy. Uh, it uh, has a pretty high loss even when it's perfectly matched. For it. So, so if you're going to run any great length of it, uh, it's really not a very good choice. You'd almost be better off, well, you would be better off using a good solid RG8U or RG213U coax, if that's what they still call the stuff, good coaxial 52-ohm or even 75-ohm TV cable, uh, and uh, despite the mismatch of 1.5 or 2 to 1, you'd probably still be better off than you would be using zip cord, even though it is a balanced line. You just hook your transmatch up to the antenna with a short run of zip cord to a full wavelength loop antenna on HF, and you'll get on the air with it. Um, he didn't uh, have any rave reviews for it. Uh, it he was pretty non-committal. Read the article for yourself. Uh, if that's all, if you want to get on the air though, and you want to get on the air right now, and you have a transmatch, and you have a transceiver, and you have some zip cord, and you have the wherewithal to maybe scotch tape. Well, no, not scotch tape. Uh, use uh, that stuff called Gorilla Tape. It's le well, no, that'll rip the paint off the siding of your house. Well, do whatever you want, okay? But a, a full wavelength loop antenna uh, fed with a relatively short length of zip cord on 80 or 40 meters. Well, that's a pretty large antenna. Uh, even 20 meters. Uh, if, if you just want to get on the air right now, you can use zip cord as a feed line. But um, I'd replace it with something a little more, a little more substantial once you get a, an installation going and get on the air. Because zip cord is at best, in my opinion, a, uh, a quickie solution. Uh, but the stuff does work. That's the verdict. It does work as a balanced line. But it's just not very, just not very good stuff. You can do better. Stan Jibalisco signing off. Proprietor and operator of Whiskey One, good vibrations saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon. 
amidst the smoke and fog of a mysterious black hole's Dakota Toritary night, prior to a snowstorm that we're expecting to make everything white once again. In my native CW fist, so long means da-da-da-da-da-da.